Yeah, my name is Allison Morley and I do admissions and recruitment for the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Toronto. So that means that I answer admissions questions um, and help students through the admissions process as well as do recruitment events. Most of the information about admissions to graduate studies uh, for the civil engineering department is on our website and we have a handy admissions FAQ that you can look at and it answers the frequently asked questions that, that we've had over the years and it should help everybody through the admission, the application process. The first step is definitely to go to our website and if you click on apply to graduate studies it will go through a step-by-step -step instruction list. Um, it's quite simple, but there are two online applications that you need to fill out, and that's important to remember. The deadline for the Master of Applied Science program and the PhD program, which are our research stream um, degrees, is February 1st each year, with <clears throat> a document and reference deadline of February 15th. The deadline for the Master of Engineering program, which is a coursework-based master's, is April 1st for international students and July 31st for domestic students. The online application opens each year around the end of September, so you have until um, February 1st to apply for the MASD and PhD. With those degrees, typically professors don't start reviewing applications until January at the earliest, and most of them start looking at the applications after the February 1st deadline. Decisions are made on an ongoing basis for the MASD and PhD, and typically we try to get all of the decisions made by the middle of April. For applications to the MEng program for a September entry each year, we try to have all of the decisions for international applicants completed by the end of April, so it gives people enough time to apply for visas and that kind of thing. And that's if they have their application completed by April 1st. For domestic MEng applicants, we make decisions on their files on an ongoing basis between the end of April and throughout the summer. Basically, we just ask that people be patient and wait for us to contact them by email um, to let them know what's going on with their application. They can actually log in to both of the online application systems and see what the status of their application is. We have two um, types of master's programs in, in our department. We have the Master of Applied Science, which is called the MASC, and we have the Master of Engineering, which is the MEng. The Master of Applied Science is more of a research degree, so you take five courses and then you do a thesis and you're supervised by a professor in our department. Um, the Master of Engineering is more of a coursework based professional masters. So you basically do 10 courses or eight courses and an MEng project and you don't necessarily work directly with a professor that's a supervisor. Essentially it's a professional coursework degree program. The MASC typically takes um, between 20 and 24 months. Um, the Master of Engineering can be done in 12 months, but you can also take longer to do it. For the programs that require a supervisor, the, the MASC and the PhD, you don't actually need to contact or to find a supervisor before you apply. The way it works in our department is you, on the application, you indicate three areas of research interest. The professors that are part of those research groups 
will then have access to your application and will be able to view all of the applications to their research area. Admission to our research-based programs, like the MASC and the PhD, comes with automatically comes with a funding offer from the department. You don't need to apply separately for scholarships or teaching assistantships or research assistantships. When your application is considered, you're automatically considered for these things. And when you receive your offer letter, it will outline what your financial support will be. You can also look on our website under graduate funding packages and you can see the, the minimum amounts that you would be offered if you're offered admission and it breaks it down into to what those different amounts are. Our English facility requirements are outlined on the website and you can see the different tests that we accept and the different scores that you need to get on them. If you have not taken a degree in an English-speaking country, um, a degree that has lasted at least two years, then you need to do the to um, an English facility test. Even if your language of instruction was in English, if it's not a country where English is considered the first language, such as the United Kingdom, Canada, the US, Australia, then you still have to take a TOEFL test. And these, these regulations are outlined on our website. If you're not currently working towards a master's degree and you want to apply for the PhD, what we suggest is that you actually apply for the Master of Applied Science, the MASC, first. Um, there are possibilities if you're admitted to the MASC program that you can then transfer to the PhD as long as it's approved by your supervisor. But as a general rule, we would say if you only have a bachelor degree, that you apply first for the MASC. Our department doesn't require a GRE score. There is a place for you to enter your GRE score on the application, so if you have it, that's fine, you can enter it, but we don't require that you have that to apply. References are entered in the Civil Engineering online application, which is in step three of the application instructions on our website. You don't need to enter reference information on the School of Graduate Studies online application, just on the civil application. Transcripts should be scanned and uploaded to the online application the, in step one of the application instructions. We no longer require at the time of application that you send us paper copies of your transcripts. And if you do send them, they won't necessarily be opened or processed because we require them to be scanned to the application. If you are offered admission, at that time you'll be required to send us original sealed copies of your transcripts. If your GPA in your final two years of study doesn't meet our minimum requirements that are stated on the website, then we really don't recommend that you apply. This is because we have such a high volume of applications that do meet the minimum requirements that often our actual admission averages are quite a bit higher than the minimum requirement. We review all of the applications on a case-by-case -case basis and the admissions committee will look at the area of research interest that you've indicated and then they will look at your background studies and they'll determine whether you have the background to, to complete the program in the area that you're interested in. We require two references for the application, and it really is best if you get two professors to be your references who have direct knowledge of your academic abilities. Because this is 
you know, you are applying to a graduate program, it makes sense to have academic references. Those will be sort of the best support for your application. However, we do accept professional references. Um, if you want to have one academic and one professional, that's fine. Um, as long as it's somebody who has supervised or managed you and can sort of attest to your different abilities. We do require that references submit their, their reference electronically or on, through our online system. If they do not have a university, an official, official university email address, you can enter their Yahoo or Gmail address on the application and have them upload their letter using that. But they will also be required to send in their letter by a hard copy which is on their university letterhead um, and that kind of thing because there has to be some way for us to verify um, who this person is. Sometimes they forget that there's two online applications they have to fill out, so that's important to remember that you have to complete both in order for your application to be reviewed. Um, another mistake would be entering your references emails incorrectly. You should also make sure that your references are aware that an email will be coming from us um, because a lot of times the email might go to their spam folder or junk mail and they think they haven't received it, but they actually have. Another common mistake is that people will send in all of their documents in paper copies and that's definitely a mistake because we don't want to be taking in paper copies of documents at the time of application. In terms of advice on how to make your application more effective, um, I would say to try to make your statement of intent in your research statement as clear and concise as possible um, and make sure it's focused on the research you're hoping to do and um, sort of the different areas you're interested in working in. Um, professors are sort of more interested that you've done the background research to on their areas of interest and what the department offers. Um, they're more interested in, in that and your actual research interest than they are in your biographical information.